everyone, Sean Frangella here with a new video about how to get started working with Adobe Fuse to build custom 3D characters and then bring them into Photoshop or a 3D app like Cinema 4D. So Adobe Fuse is a new 3D character creator program that's part of Creative Cloud and available now. And it's been in development by Mixamo since they were purchased by Adobe and it all now works in Creative Cloud together and is available now and you can spit out the 3D models in a variety of ways. So let's get building some 3D characters and see what we're talking about. All right, let's get going. The first thing we're gonna to need to do is download and install Fuse if you haven't done that. And where you can get that is if you go to the Adobe Updater app, which on a Mac is up here, and scroll down, it'll be under Find Additional Apps right here, and we just wanna do Install, and that'll download and install that. All right, now that's done and we can open it up. And you'll also wanna make sure you update Photoshop and all the other apps for everything to work properly with this workflow. So if there's not an open button, there'll be an update button. Be sure to click that or update all. So now we can open up Fuse by clicking open. And here we go on our way to making some fun 3D characters. Now here's our basic Fuse interface and how this works is it's broken down into four parts of assembling a character, customizing, adding clothing and texturing your materials. In this video, we're gonna take a quick tour and talk about getting our models into Photoshop. If you wanna get a deeper dive on each of these, be sure to check out my additional videos on each of these topics where we'll go into a lot more detail on these. Okay, so to get started creating a character, we're gonna grab any of these head models. Let's grab this male fit zombie A. We can just click and that's gonna open that up in our window. In our window, we can pan around the camera here or orbit with these tools here. And if we go to edit, we can see that there's some shortcuts for that. So P, R, and F can be our camera tools. Now, to build out the rest of our character, we can open up leg, arm, and head and click those. And it will add whichever one we click to our model. Or if we go back to head and right click on zombie and go to add matching parts, It'll populate this with that full matching character. Now, what we can do if we want to manipulate this further in this view is if we get this select arrow and zoom in, we can grab any of these little areas and drag left or right on the mouse to move and adjust and inflate or deflate and really push a lot of these little built-in settings that come with each of these models. And if we want to see numerically what's happening if we jump over to customize we can see that we can really push and pull each area of the body with lots of little settings so how this works is we can drag these meters or if we want to work visually can zoom in and just pull this and we can see it's adjusting those meters over there if we just pull things around and a really cool thing with this is for each of these topics there's randomize so if we click randomize on our arms or on our face it'll adjust those to a random setting, or we could randomize all on this button on the bottom, and it's gonna give us a totally different setting with this character. And then we could tweak it further and you know, push and pull things if we wanna make more adjustments. Next, we'd wanna add some clothing. So we can jump into clothing in this tab, grab some quick basic clothing by clicking any of these. So I'll put this suit on him. You can go in the bottoms and add maybe these camo pants with knee pads, grab some shoes, and even add additional stuff like hair, hats, which will snap onto our character, which is a nice little automatic setting. Eyewear like glasses, goggles, and even facial features like mustaches and beards. Now, if we wanna further customize any of these materials, we can go into our texture tab. And if we click on any of these, it's going to bring up the material settings for that object. So if we click on the hat, we get the hat or the suit. And we have some base settings for each texture, including the resolution. So if we want it really high res, we can turn that up. Things to really adjust and tweak how it fits, add things like dirt, change the colors of all that. And then for each material that these objects are made up with, we can click into that and adjust the colors even further. So here we have the shirt. We could change each color of the shirt to something else, and it's gonna automatically update that over there. And we can also access those by grabbing here. 
Now these are the base materials that it's built in, but if we wanted to swap any of these out, let's say for this shirt, we wanted to get a different pattern one. If we're on the shirt, we can click a different one and then it's going to rebuild that material to have this setting. So there's lots of different options and settings and fabrics built in to get you off the ground with building a character without having to worry about projecting textures and things not fitting correctly. So that looks good as a, in a base demo model. Now what we need to do with this and the real power of Fuse is that we can take this and bring it into Photoshop or spit it out for a 3D program and automatically add rigging and drop in some pre-built animations like run cycles, jumps, and all sorts of stuff. So to get this into Photoshop and into our libraries, what we can do is go to save to CC libraries. If we wanted to go to a 3D program like Cinema 4D or even get the 3D model to spit into game engines like Unity, we could click save to Mixamo and that's gonna open up a different workflow. If you wanna learn about that one of taking this 3D model and getting it into Cinema 4D very quickly and easily, be sure to check out my other video on that right after this one where we'll go over that totally different workflow. For this one, we're gonna focus on bringing to Photoshop. So I'm gonna click save to CC libraries and I'll give it a model. So I'll call this zombie new. It's gonna drop open an option for libraries. So I can just go to my libraries and click save. And it's gonna package my character. And what it's doing here now is wrapping everything together, adding that rigging automatically, and really taking out a lot of the technical work that you would need when you're building a custom character and letting you work with the creative part of it. And look how fast that's going and doing the work behind the scenes. And then we'll get a message that it'll take a minute or two. And now what we can do is jump over into Photoshop and set up a new file. So I'll just create a new file at 1920 by 1080. Let's assume we're setting up like a video storyboard and go to OK. And once it's ready, we'll start to see this refreshing icon that it's syncing new files. And we'll even get a little message that says my new character is ready, which is awesome. And it'll pop right into our libraries and load up. And we can see that it's synced or sunk or however you're supposed to refer to that now. And to get that into our file, we can just drag this from our library into our file. And it's going to drop our character into our file. And we can see if we collapse a couple of these on our layer, we now have all of our materials. And we want to change our workspace to 3D. And that's going to open up this 3D window and focus on our properties. And I'm just gonna pull my layers window over here so we can see that too. And right off the bat, we can do a number of things with this. If we grab this little light icon, that's gonna open up our light properties and we could adjust our infinite light. So we could put that over here if we want something you know, dramatic. If we wanna move our default camera around, we can click on current view and use any of these tools up here to move the camera zoom in or orbit to get different views. And if we click on our character, we can see it's going to show the rig of our character. And in our properties panel, it's gonna open up a lot of these pre-built motion captured animations. So let's grab one of these. If we click one like pouring and serving drinks, it's gonna load that animation up into Photoshop. And now if we open up our timeline down here, we could pick a frame by moving ahead. So let's take a look at this and let's go with that one and just position our camera and get a good look at this guy. Okay, so now that we have that set up, you might be wondering why I would bring this into Photoshop or what I can do with this. And where this gets to be useful is because this works just like any other layer does in Photoshop. So even though this is this big 3D environment, this is still working like a layer and it has access to everything any other layer would have. So if we wanted to make this part of a bigger Photoshop composition by changing the color of the background, maybe we could grab some texture images and paste this in our background and cycle through some blending modes here. With our character layer, we could still add things like layer styles if we want to colorize this and give it kind of a silhouetted or change the blending mode 
something might multiply and get kind of a limited color palette look. Get some outlines and maybe we'll add kind of a bright outline to this and get some interesting little design ideas. And again, since this is just a layer, we could grab that and even change the blending mode of this layer to get kind of a different kind of graphical poster design look. And we can also duplicate that layer with Command J. And now we have additional copies that we could cycle through blend modes, change the overlays or add additional ones to really change our look and leverage everything we could already do in Photoshop. And of course we could add some text to this. So if this is a style frame for say a movie called Nightmare 2015 or something of that nature, we can bring in our 3D assets and then use Photoshop for what Photoshop is good at of layering things, changing blending modes. We could even copy and paste our blending mode from our 3D character to our text and then just make adjustments as we want to maybe again just thinking as we're going through this now cycle through and change some blending modes and very quickly and easily we have this style frame or poster set up that looks pretty graphical without having to worry about getting too deep into a, a full 3d workflow and for our 3d layer once we're all set we can grab this back and click this render button and that would render this in full resolution so you could do a lot with these bringing them into photoshop grabbing some poses moving along in our timeline and leveraging existing photoshop stuff to really integrate this new 3d character workflow and if you want to learn more about working with fuse for building 3d characters you can check out my other video about taking our character from fuse and bringing it into cinema 4d where you can really get full control of animating and customizing this in a full 3D program, as well as check out some of the other videos on diving deeper into things like assembling our character, customizing it, adjusting the clothing and textures to really get a thorough understanding of everything you can do right now in Adobe Fuse. And to get more videos on motion graphics and 3D animation, be sure to subscribe to the channel at youtube.com slash Sean Frangella. And if you have any questions on any of this stuff, you can hit me up on Twitter, I'm at Sean Frangella. And if you wanna really help the show keep going, you can support the show on patreon.com slash Sean Frangella, where you can get access to project files like the ones you saw in this video, as well as many more. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you at the next video. Do you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash seanfrangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash seanfrangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at Sean Frangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video.